So I've gotten several requests from people wanting me to do a more in-depth video on how I make corned black powder. So here it is. This stuff here, this is 200 grams and it's been milling for about 10 hours and it's ready to go. And so this process will start when you are done milling your powder, whether you make it with the CIA method and then after you let it dry or if you mill it dry like this here, <clears throat> this is when this process starts. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of water. Again, this is 200 grams and I know someone's gonna ask me, well, how much water? Well, not a lot. In fact, it's as little as possible. All you really want is for when you stir it around with a spoon, it doesn't make any dust. I mean, for 200 grams, it'll probably take like 10 drops of water. And yes, I prefer to use water over alcohol. I find it makes nicer, harder granules. And it seems like if you wet it just a little bit, it has a nicer, uh, cleaner burn than you do if you use alcohol. Just my experience. I can't stress enough how important it is to use as little water as possible. It's really easy to overdo it. So I put a few drops in and I stir it around. And there's still dust coming up, which means it needs a little bit more water. Just until it stops making dust when you move it around to find is all you really need. Down right there. It's really easy to use too much water. So, here's our pucking dye. I get a lot of questions about this too. You can buy them, but a friend of mine made this one for me. So, if you really wanna get scientific, you should weigh out each amount. That way you get an equal amount of compression and so on and so forth. Typically, I do about one big heaping spoonful right in there. This goes right on the top. Kind of center it a little bit. This is a 20 ton press. I get a lot of questions about that too. What kind of press do I need? So on and so forth. do this is I press it all the way down until it stops and then I just leave it here for a little while like you know count to 20 or something like that and then after I count to 10 or 20 or whatever number that I can count to I come back up here and I just give it a little bit more squeeze to make sure it's as compressed as I can physically make it and then count to 10 or something close to it Yeah, and people get upset about this. You know, they'll see a little bit of moisture coming out on the bottom and it's like, well, you're using too much water. You're you're losing potassium nitrate. Yeah, trust me, it, it's fine. So long as it's not squirting out of there like goo, it's, it's fine. You might lose a couple of milligrams at the very most. I think it would probably be an immeasurable amount. For the most part, yeah, I would agree. You have a little bit of moisture there, but that's okay. And now you gotta get that out of there. So typically you just take that. You're always gonna get a little bit of this along the edges and stuff. Put that right on back in there. Nothing wrong with it at all. And there you have a puck.
We'll do another one just for sport. Again. One heaping spoonful. Stuff off of there. Waste it. Yeah. Something that I failed to mention there was I like to let these pucks sit and dry for at least a week and I will set them right out in the sun and just leave them there. Uh, now, I don't know about for most people's climates in the rest of the country, but out here in the southwest, for the most part, it's pretty dry and warm most of the time. So a week usually does just fine. Next puck, typically take them like this. You can do them one at a time or whatever. I'll put a rag on top. Give them a couple of minutes break them into more manageable pieces. And then we put them right into our handy dandy grain grinder. Now, I'm sure I'm gonna get a lecture from somebody about this saying how it could make a spark and spontaneously combust and, you know, unravel the time-space continuum and, you know, all kinds of other bad shit. So if you're gonna use this method, be careful. How do you be careful? I don't know, don't keep your hand on it. Don't have fucking three pounds worth of powder underneath it. Small batches, we do one, one puck at a time. So even if something were to happen, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Nobody would lose any fingers or eyebrows or mustache hairs. Put your pieces in there like that. Crank it slowly, like so. This here is adjustable and we got it set to where we like it where we get mostly three F. And look at that. you have it now you'll get different sizes and so the next thing you do is to take a screen and sort it all by size okay so I get a lot of questions too about what screens it pretty much depends on what it is that you like uh, I have a whole variety of screens this here is like big medium and small or 1f 2f and 3f and then I use a paint strainer and I'll put the finished, all the strain powder in there and I'll move it around and you'll get all the dust off of it and it works pretty well. So, what we're gonna do here. Now this is only one puck, okay? So typically you'd have a lot more. So there, you have one F. Now, you could run that back through the grinder if you wanted it all smaller than that. Typically we make one, two, and three F. 
And then, run it through this. Now, I have had some people ask me, uh, how much yield do you get? You know, how, how much loss do you get uh, by doing it this way? And we've done the math and it works out to be about anywhere from 15 to 20%. And I'll show you what I mean by that right here. What you'll get is dust. You have some fine grains in there too, and you could uh, you could run those through a finer strainer if you wanted to. But we're trying to keep them all uniform. So, <clears throat> what you'll get, thank you, is a particular amount of dust, which is pretty much uh, unusable. And it's not really that big of a deal because you could just put it right back into your deal and form it into pucks and be done. So it's not the end of the world. But you see, you can knock that out right there. And of course, you know, uh, wear a mask and safety goggles and all the safety stuff when you're doing this so you're not breathing in this uh, stuff, which will make you cough and does taste and smell bad. Then you'll get... What is about 3F. And then again, you know, the dust, you just put back in the jar and then compress it again. So it's not like it goes bad. People do talk like, well, well, there's always a particular amount of loss. Well, it's not like you lose it, lose it, you know? So there. You know, those right there are a little bit bigger. You know, you could put them in there. And again, you could run them through the machine again, too, and, you know, try and get a little bit more uniform. You know, right there is 2F. This here is closer to 1. But we have our setup to where we get mostly 3F. You'll get less dust if you have bigger granules. The, the, the tighter the granules or the, the tighter the machine is, the smaller your granules are, the more dust you'll get. So there. Next, <clears throat> what we do, we take a little bit of graphite powder. This is something I'm not really sold on yet. Uh, it is something we're doing, but you know, mostly just because that's what we hear the commercial outfits do. So we take our powder here that's already sorted and we'll put it in our tumbler here with no media, none. Just the, just the corn powder with a particular amount of graphite powder. It's like a half a gram per hundred, uh, which is not a lot. And we'll turn it for a few hours, uh, again, with no media. And then the finished product ends up looking like this. Now this has been tumbled. This has been graphite coated. This is 3F, which looks an uh, awful lot like Go-X. This here is 2F. And uh, the 1F stuff, which is right here, uh, I don't bother tumbling or graphite coating that stuff. You know, it, it's pretty... Pretty good sized granules. I just don't bother with it. It's not something that I use typically besides for, you know, Fourth of July activities. So, that's the finished powder. In fact, let me put some my powder there and then get some 3F Go X that looks uh, remarkably similar. And performs very well. It outperforms Go X. Yeah. And shoots in and kick and a lot of those other ones. And like some people talk about elephant powder, some old powder that was made by an outfit called Elephant. So anyway, that's that. I hope that was helpful.
Look, I'm gonna taint my stuff by putting that GoX right in there. Oh, don't, 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 don't do it. Don't. All right. For the love of God, All don't. Right. I know what we'll do. Oh, we can just light it on fire. Burning my finger. I know. All right, so here's some of our homemade 3F. This has not been tumbled, polished, or graphite coated. Plenty fast. Very fast. All right, so I hope that was helpful to somebody out there. Um, if you have any more questions or comments, uh, by all means, go ahead and let me know. I'll do my best to answer them. Let me see if I can think of a few off the top of my head. Uh, the ratio of black powder. I, I still, for the most part, use 75, 15, 10. I'm always playing around with it generally. You know, I'll, I'll up it. I, I, well, okay, let, let, let me be 100% honest. I, I've been running more uh, potassium nitrate lately than I have in the past. I'll, I'll run probably 77, uh, 13, 10. I find that works pretty well. It just seems like it kind of leans the ratio out and makes it burn a little faster and a little hotter. So, you know, that's that. Charcoal, that's another thing I get asked a lot about. Uh, typically, I've been using Eastern Red Cedar since I pretty much started. But over the last few months, I've switched to Willow and I've been really happy with the results. Um, you know, it's easy to buy the the wood chips and just throw them in the in the thing and make charcoal and I started you know going down to the riverbed and getting some uh some willow branches and making charcoal like that and it really does make damn fine black powder I know I've been kind of critical of the uh everybody knows you have to have you know willow for the best charcoal uh but it really does make uh really good black powder uh so uh, that's what I'm using nowadays, and I'm probably going to stick with that for some time. Uh, I, I get people telling me all the time, you know, oh, you need to try this kind of wood for charcoal. You need to try that kind of wood. And some stuff, man, I've never even heard of some of this stuff. Um, but willow works really, really, really good. If you can't get a hold of that, you know, buy the Eastern Red Cedar, you know, chips or whatever at the pet store, or whatever. That that works well, too. Um Let's see, what else? Up in the ratio seems to help a little bit. Um, the, the the graphite thing. Uh, you know, tumbling, tumbling the powder, uh, it, it does help. Mostly what I think it does is it, it knocks the, uh, the sharp edges off of those granules. And as far as it burning better, eh, I don't think so. Same thing with the graphite. You know, I, I keep saying I'm not really sold on it. Well, because I haven't noticed a difference. It doesn't make it any faster. It doesn't make it any more powerful. It doesn't make it any cleaner as far as I can tell with every test that I've run. I, I can't tell a difference. So uh, I think that's about it. So um, again, if anyone's got any questions, go ahead and ask me, leave me a comment. Uh, if you thought this video didn't suck, do me a favor and hit the like button and maybe consider subscribing. And if you did think it sucked, well, then go make your own damn video.